What's up guys? Welcome back to a new vlog. Let me show you where I'm at. I'm not in Salt Lake anymore. Matter of fact, I'm long, long ways away from Salt Lake. Check out this scenery. It may not be much to look at for a lot of people, but I like this, this desert country just because I don't visit it much. I'm down here with my buddy Garrett. What's up? Micah, he's over here. These guys, if you probably already know, if you don't, they have a YouTube channel, Hidden Instinct, and they do a lot of outdoor adventures all kinds of hunting. I'd say one thing they're really, really good at is uploading coyote hunting footage. Sneak peek at what we're shooting today for the Hushin channel. Coyote hunting video today and maybe a half day tomorrow, we'll see, but Mike is gonna get the uh, drone out. We're gonna do a bunch of drone footage for the videos, both on their channel and on the Hush channel. We'll see if I can crash it. I crashed this thing a lot. <laughs> As soon as I, we started talking about it this morning, they had more stories of how they blew it up <laughs> than like really good video that they got. But uh, that's kind of what I'm up to now. So I figured I'd just drag the vlog around while we're out here hunting and then maybe a little bit back in town. I got some cool stuff I want to show you at Garrett's house. Sheds, heads, that kind of stuff. The typhoon, huh? Yep. Look at that beast. Holy smokes. That's a big one. It is. <laughs> so we don't use it very often. Yeah, it's such a pain in the butt, but dude, they make some really, really cool footage. You just got to take the time to do it. Yep. Uh, it's getting bright out there. Let's go. Let's check out this drone. Uh-oh, he's starting it up. <laughs> Built-in screen? Yep. A lot of them connect with your phone now, right? Yeah. I'm curious, any of you guys uh, big drone pilots? Is that drone users, drone sure. pilots? Hey Micah, hey, what? on a scale of one to 10, where's your stress <laughs> level right now? Uh, I think since off. I've already crashed it like nine times, it's down to like a four instead of a 10. Because <laughs> if I crash it now, I'm just like, well, whatever, it's just done. I'm trying to remember how to make it do its follow me thing. It's been a long time since I've flown this thing. <laughs> I think all I had to do is flip that switch and it should. Well, what you can do is flip the switch and just take off walking just to see if it does once it gets up in the air. Oh, here we go. We got power. If not, I can just fly it and follow you. I'll just stand back here and follow you. Yeah. Yes. That's so cool. I love the perspective from drones, seeing some of the terrain and just the large amounts of country that we get to see and hunt. So this is going to be pretty cool. Some drone footage now I want to show you guys got to be quiet but I want to show you guys a typical setup of what they have going on here so the first thing is to uh, hide the truck so we always typically park the truck down in like low sections like a little wash or a little ravine or something we'll grab our gear and uh, hike to the stand so let's see what we got going on this time you guys hit this stand before no, well, it was close to here. It was just right down here. We've never walked over this and seen it, so we don't even know what it looks like. Did you get one? What's that? Did you get one? No, we didn't. We didn't call anything out. We only made two stands and it was really windy that day, so. We're just basically hitting this last spot before we uh, head down to the big valley, so. We're gonna cruise over this hill, hide the truck right here, 
and get set up over the top of that. What do you think? Just trying to decide which one. Ridge, so typically go down to find some bushes, get in the shade of the bush, set up the call, and get going. All right, we picked our spot. It's gonna be a good one. Micah's on camera duty. I can actually see all directions from here, so it's good. Just hoping that something comes up either down this wash or up and over that, but that's pretty much a setup. We're not we're not very far from the truck. We'll hit the uh, electronic call here soon. And he's hoping that a coyote comes. We'll usually stick at least at 15 to 20 minutes each day. So I'll let you know how it goes. Well, we put in our 20 minutes and uh, no dogs. So we're back to the truck, which by the way, check out Micah's sweet build. Been working on this for a while. Was even uploading Tacoma Tuesday videos for a while. Turned out sweet. It's not all the way done yet, is it? Nope. I still have twenty thousand dollars I want to put into it. But... Only twenty grand, worth more than all my trucks combined. <laughs> Someday it'll be a while. <laughs> well, guys, we're moving on. But like I said, I'll just I'm dragging the vlog around during my trip, so uh, I don't know what we're gonna capture. We'll just keep filming, keep hanging out. But all the good stuff for this coyote hunt will be on the Hidden Instinct channel, and again, it'll be on the Hush channel. So. Let's get back on the road and find the next location. We're gonna go a little ways this time. You nervous, bro? No, man, it's been all day. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm just uh, wrapping up this little section of the vlog. I'm gonna carry on. Uh, like I said, we'll go to Garrett's house, show you guys some really cool stuff, but we're able to get two dogs today. Had a great time, and uh, now we're heading back to town, so we'll catch up there. We made it out of there alive. We're at Garrett's house. We just went to uh, Texas Roadhouse to eat dinner. And before Mike tries to sneak out of here, I'm swiping all this footage for the uh, so we can make a video on the Hush channel. Even though and it's such good footage, I mean, it's we got like lots of footage. The best, okay, really not. I screwed up on the first one. Here's one thing that I'm like, dude, this is nuts. So there is so much footage from the entire day and all the different stands that could kind of be like used or not used at all. I'm like, this is a lot of gig of footage that's like just sitting at the stands where nothing comes in. Files are swapping, and like I said, I want to get some story time. Can we get a mute here? Uh, get a mute? What's this your favorite channel? Dude, big, who doesn't like Big Bang Theory? If you don't like Big Bang Theory, you can just... I'm pretty sure right, It's watched. a nerd show, I'm not gonna lie. Unsubscribe now. <laughs> it's the only thing. <laughs> we watched a marathon in Wyoming. <laughs> Check this out though. I've got to show you guys these bucks and get a quick backstory on them real quick. This set, I have seen this set for quite a while. When I met Micah down here in St. George at like yeah. an antler shed show. Yeah, it was, what was it yeah, called? It was, sports, it was like 12 years ago. It was, a long years time ago. Like it was at Sportsman's Warehouse and uh, Micah, you had already found that set. Yeah, I just found it, like not a few months before that. Mm -hmm. They were in great condition. Micah colored them up, put them on a European mount stud that thing is so heavy huge frame you ever get killed not that i know of a friend of mine saw it on a rut the uh, fall after i found those sheds and figured he was like 230 to 240 and never saw him again and i spent that year after i heard that i spent 36 days in there looking for another set off of him and never found the him. new what would have been the year after yeah. that huh so he's even bigger that thing's giant this doesn't even do it justice now this beast has got a really, really cool story too. The wall. The wall. You gotta go to the other side to see the wall. You can see okay, the we mass see. on that other side where it's just like a moose. There you Look go. Look at that. That's why they call him the wall. Crazy coincidence that Micah found this buck dead. He went out there in hopes to find sheds. Yeah. Off that there. specific buck, right? Yeah, I was out there working and we kind of knew the general area he was in. And we always had like three or four hours after work to go just hike around and it's literally like two miles down the road from where we were staying so we went out trying to find some sheds off of him and maybe hopefully the browns from that year and just walked a fence line 
out and didn't find anything. And when I turned around and came back, I cut just through the open because it was the quicker shot back to the truck and 200 yards off the water hole, there he was. Biggest year off that buck or what was he like? Yeah. Yeah. The year before he was he didn't have near that mass. He was just basically an inline six is really what he was. Yeah, he didn't have all the he had the inlines but he didn't have all the other extras. Or the mass. And he didn't have all that palmation. He was pretty much a carbon copy on his left side on his right side. A lot of people after that buck? Lots. Yeah. He actually people. got he actually got shot by a hunter that year on the archery oh. hunt. And our buddy Breck Bundy has trail cam pictures of him. And you, after, because he disappeared after getting shot, and everyone's like, that's what killed him. Mm -hmm. He's never going to get found. Well, he disappears for like two and a half months, comes back d during the rut, full swing. He's really? just rutting does, going crazy. And you can see in a trail cam pit where that arrow hit him high in the back, didn't, didn't even phase him. But yeah, lion killed. The last trail cam picture Brett got of him, like he came in like that day during the daylight, and then he left. And that night, there were three lions on that water hole that come in. And like Michael said, he found him 200 yards from that water hole. That's nuts. Man. Yeah, it was. Could have been. Could have been from those. Yeah, I, w I would almost guarantee just the way I found him and how he looked when we found him. I mean, anybody that's found lion kills before, you kind of just know the look of when they're fish the game would have looked at it, and you know, if it, if it was some foul play, they wouldn't have let him keep, keep it. it. You know, I'm no expert now by any means, and this is just me kind of taking a guess. I would always be like, how do the mountain lions get the biggest, baddest, buffest, strongest deer? Yeah. Do they run down after the rut? After the rut, they are freaking easy pickings yep. for a mountain lion. They are so worn down. They are they have no energy. They have no fight left in them. They're in their worst condition ever. Even if they're a buck like that, you know, big antlers, they're the weakest of the bunch. Absolutely. Yep. That's usually when you find those big bucks lying killed is right after the rut, December, January, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. I want to share a quick story with those guys. There's so much to show you here. We'll have to do more show and tell stuff. Big sheds, a lot of stories on the bucks they've killed themselves, but thought I'd just give you a quick update. Say adios to Micah because we're bouncing out of here. Yep. <laughs> Go for road swap trip all the files and get this thing done with here real quick.